What's going on guys, my name is Matt and this video is going to be a bit of a personal rig update. Nvidia sent out this RTX 2060 for me to make some videos about and I wanted to pop it into my personal rig to try it out for a little and test stuff like real time ray tracing before I do some other testing and comparisons. I also wanted to try out a new case and a few other new parts so today I thought I'd bring you along for my rig rebuild and do some testing of the RTX 2060 to give you guys my initial thoughts on it. So over the past past year or so, I've been making my PC smaller and smaller, and until now, this was its final form. At only 7 liters in volume, my PC was very easy to travel with and took up almost no room on my desk. But this compact size also meant there were a decent amount of limitations in terms of hardware, with the biggest limitation being the CPU cooler. While performance wasn't hindered too much, temps and noise were my biggest issues. Because of this, it gave me an excuse to try out a case I've always wanted to build in, which is the SG13 from Silverstone. So what specs are in my personal rig and what am I changing? So the heart of my build for the past year and a half has been the Ryzen 7 1700. With 8 cores and 16 threads, the 1700 has been amazing to use from the get-go. Video editing, gaming, and anything else I throw at it is handled with ease. My particular 1700 is a pretty poor overclocker, but keeping it at 3.8 GHz across all cores works really well for my needs. In terms of cooling, I was using a Cryrig C7, which is probably Probably the best low profile CPU cooler under 50 millimeters, but for an 8 core overclock CPU, it doesn't perform amazing. Temps were relatively high and the fan was very loud under heavy load, which is a big deal breaker for me. Because I am upgrading my case, I now have room for a 120mm liquid cooler in the form of this Cooler Master Master Liquid Light. This is a pretty entry level 120mm cooler, but for my mild overclock of 3.8GHz on my 1700, this cooler works great. I have the fan in between the radiator and the case and I have it set for exhaust and I'll explain why later in the video. For my motherboard, Board, I'm using ASRock's B350 ITX board, which is probably the best ITX B350 board produced because of its good feature set, well thought out header slash connector layout, and its competitive price. For RAM, I have 16GB of Galax Hall of Fame RAM at 3200MHz. This is really nice DDR4 RAM that has worked pretty well thus far. But with the recent price drop of DDR4, upgrading to 32GB is very, very tempting right now. In terms of the GPU, the most recent GPU I was using was this OEM RX480, which for the games I play works fine. With that being said, I am throwing in this RTX 2060 for testing and trying stuff out like real-time ray tracing. This is the founder's edition of the 2060 and I have to say this is a really good looking card in my opinion and I applaud Nvidia for creating a unique open air cooler design. In my opinion this should have been called the RTX 2070 and the current 2070 should have been called the 2070 Ti as when you look at TDP, CUDA core count, and price this is clearly much more of a 1070 replacement than it is a 1060 replacement. Either way I'll be going into more detail about this card's performance and my thoughts on its value later in in the video. Moving on to storage, I'm keeping my 500GB boot SSD the same, which is this VX500 from OCZ. This is a pretty decent drive and it served me well for the past couple of years. I was also using a 500GB Samsung NVMe M.2 drive to edit off of and for a little extra short term storage. But being completely honest, I found little to no benefit editing off of this NVMe drive versus just editing off of a regular SATA SSD. Because of this, I'm actually switching this drive out for a 1TB Patriot SU800, which I got for around $90, which is an insane deal. If I decide to sell this NVMe drive, it'll more than make up for the cost of this new drive I just installed. This new 1TB SU800 is actually a really good drive and is one of my go-to recommendations for price to performance SATA SSDs. It has DRAM and works great for a boot drive or most any other type of drive you want to use it for. Powering my system is the Corsair SF450 which has worked great over the past year or so powering my machine. While 450 watts may not seem like it would be enough, in reality it's plenty of power for my system, and heading over to r slash small form factor PC, you'll find a number of people powering 8700K plus GTX 1080 rigs with 450 watt PSUs. I highly recommend an SFX PSU like this one if you're wanting to build an ITX PC, as even if your case does support full 
portable ATX power supplies, these SFX units take up much less space and have much shorter cables, which is ideal for small enclosures. Like I said before, I'm now using the Sugo SG13 from Silverstone, and for $40ish, this is an amazing case for the money. It features a full mesh front panel, plenty of ventilation for your GPU, and even supports full-size power supplies, which can be great for budget builders. Building in this case was pretty easy, and I came up with some pretty interesting solutions to maximize airflow. The biggest one being mounting my PSU to the top right instead of onto an adapter in the center. This allowed me to attach an 80mm knock to a fan to the side of the chassis. This was used as intake, and I put the CPU AIO as exhaust. I did this as Linus Tech Tips found when working with an SG13, putting the radiator in exhaust reduced temp significantly. I'm happy with the temps and more importantly noise right now, so I don't have much interest in trying a front intake configuration, but if that's something you'd like to see, let me know in the comment section down below. This configuration definitely introduces a much higher potential for dust buildup, so I'll probably have to clean my PC out more than usual. So now that you've seen the build, let's talk about performance. I tested four games, Battlefield with and without ray tracing enabled, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Far Cry 5, and Apex Legends. Starting out with Far Cry 5 at 1440p ultra settings, using the built-in benchmark, this 2060 system produced an average of 76 FPS with a minimum of 61. This is impressive to see a game like Far Cry 5 can be maxed out at 1440p with the 1060 and maintain an average above 60 FPS. Moving on to Assassin's Creed Odyssey at 1440p ultra high settings, this PC averaged 44 FPS with a minimum of 21. This is a very hard to run benchmark, but turning the settings down to high at 1440p should have no trouble giving a locked 60 FPS. Moving on to Apex Legends, a super popular title right now. At 1440p with competitive settings, the system averaged 119 FPS at 1440p with a low of 90. This was a really great experience and 144 FPS could be achieved by dropping the resolution to 1080p. Finally, Battlefield 5, one of the only ray tracing games out at the time of making this video. At 1440p with ultra settings and DXR turned off, the system averaged 89 FPS with a low of 71. This was a great playing experience and looked awesome too. With DXR enabled and set to high, with all other settings the same, I saw an average of 47 FPS. I have to admit, real-time ray tracing does look cool, but in a fast-paced shooter, I'm not focused on how the puddles are reflecting light, I'm focused on completing the objective. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the 2060's performance as it seems to be close to a 1070 Ti. To me, this is a decent deal, but at the time of making this video, Nvidia is rumored to release another 60s series card, so I would wait to learn about that before pulling the trigger on a 2060. So yeah guys, I think this wraps this video up. I hope you guys enjoyed it, if you did, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, as well as consider subscribing for more PC and tech related content in the future, and as always, this is Matt from Tech by Matt, signing out.